All right, so I'm going to be showing how to install this ID cooling um, SE-914-XT um, CPU cooler. Uh, we're going to be installing this on an AM4, so hopefully, oh yeah, you can see it supports AM4. It also supports LGA2066, LGA2011, LGA1200, LGA1150, 1151, 1155, and 1156. And here they also put uh, 1700, LGA1700, okay? Alright, so this is the model, the basic model without um, the lighting and everything, okay? You can see the fan is a 92 millimeter fan and all this other stuff cover. All right, so we just needed something to cool the CPU. We don't need anything fancy. All right, <clears throat> they bought this computer built uh, by CyberPower PC, the one that I'm going to be installing this on. Here you can see they have the installation um, guides. So this is for LGA 1700. It has a separate manual for that. I guess I don't know why it's separate, but anyways, then they got the installation guide for this. Maybe I should just show the guides just so in case you threw away yours or something or you didn't know, then you can kind of see what they have. You can see they have the standoffs and all of that. <clears throat> okay, if you need that information, you can pause and read it on your own. I'm just going to be installing the one that I need. Okay. So the installation guide is this really long piece of paper that just folds out. Okay, and here you go. They show you the stuff that's included. Again, you can pause and read all of this. All right, I just need this AM4 one. So here you can see they actually removed the original mounting uh, bracket, the plastic mounting bracket thingies. So make sure to keep that somewhere in case you change your cooling system and end up putting those things back because some of them do require that okay then looks like they reuse the plate they get the different screws and mount in that thing and then they just screw that into place very simple okay they tell you to put the thermal paste here you can see the other models the LGA ones they have a, sep a different back plate that you gotta install okay very simple straightforward to install here you go they the different models it looks like they just use a different uh, top plate different screws and then this what is this how to connect the fan all right very straightforward okay so then they have if you have questions you can call this number and stuff all right I'm gonna put this thing together and let's see okay first thing let's take this out okay pretty sure this is the fan Actually, no, the fan's there. This has all the little different metal mounting tools. Okay, um, here's the LGA 1700 stuff. So I guess they added that. Maybe um, as people started needing those, they found a way to add it on. Here's the mounting thing for the uh, Intel stuff. It doesn't come with any thermal paste, so you do have to have... Well, we'll find out. In the, I didn't open the box yet, So, but it looks like you'll have to... Um, use your own. Uh, make sure that you do remove this plastic thing before installing it because if you t don't take this out, your computer's going to overheat, obviously. <sighs> okay. So it's ID, so I'm guessing you want it up this way, though technically it shouldn't matter even if you put it upside down. Um, this one, because they have the fans over here, oops, sorry, I'm not showing you guys what I'm even pointing at. Okay, so this computer, I guess, let me let me flip the computer over so that I can show you guys this easier. Okay, so I'll put it this way. All right, so this computer has the fans that blow the air out this way. So I'm going to actually make the CPU cooler blow air this way, and then that way it will get sucked out that way. Okay. So, because of that, we do want to turn this fan around. Um, I can probably mount the fan later, but anyways, to remove the fan, you have this. You gotta pull it. Oh, it's pretty tough to pull this off. There we go. Okay, works best to use my thumb. And you basically pull it this direction while kind of lifting it up, and there we go. Okay, so we got those two brackets out, and we're gonna turn this around. Technically, actually, we should leave this off because we do have to screw this down first. And um, 
it looks like the way they mount this, one screw is the other way. So, hmm. So if that's the case, well, the best way is to blow the air through this. So it would be best if I can mount the fan on this way. Okay, but we do have to screw it down first. So yeah, let me do that, okay? So let's get the bracket here. So in this box, I'm guessing they have all the different mounting materials. I'm gonna have to move the camera so it's at a different angle for you guys to be able to see better. Let me do that. Okay, so hopefully this is a better viewing angle. Let's actually lower this. Is that, is that a better viewing angle? I don't know, I hope so. Okay, so we got the box of stuff here. Let's see, okay, it does come with its own thermal paste. I don't know how good this thermal paste is. Hopefully it's good. Usually most thermal paste only will affect it by a degree or two, so you don't really need anything crazy fancy. Okay, it comes with the other uh, back plate for other Intel models. Okay, so I guess the first one that we took out is for the LGA 1700. Okay, uh, it does have this for additional fans if you want to add additional, fan, like a second fan on it. Okay, then you got these different mounting hardware different mounting hardware here as well um, then you get the two metal plates okay so we're gonna look at or not the whatever those things that extend across so let's go back to the installation booklet okay I know a lot of people don't like reading instructions but you really should okay we're gonna remove the four screws here then we keep the old back plate in there and then we use these longer screws they don't really say which ones to use. I guess, is there only one type? Sometimes they'll have different types of these plastic standoffs. Yeah, there's only one type. So it looks like we just use this packet, okay? So these standoffs, these screws, and then I don't know if we'll even need those. I think we won't. Yeah, we just need those four screws. Oh, so that's very, very simple. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So we're going to use the rounded ones, so let's go ahead and get the rounded brackets out of here. Alright, these, and we're going to undo the four screws here. I'm going to be using a PH2 or JAS, sorry, PH2 screwdriver. Alright, what did I do with the handle? Oh, it got rolled away. Okay. So we're going to remove the four screws here. I don't know if you guys will even be able to see what I'm doing. Kind of not really. My hand's going to be all in the way. Okay, so we're going to take this one out. All right, and again, save these screws and the little plastic pieces here because if you get a different uh, cooler, you might eventually need them. The original cooler that was in here they put a liquid cooler and it actually used this mounting hardware so save these for later okay just in case I mean you could always try and buy them online or something later but I'd rather not if you already if it comes with the computer okay and here's one tip um, what we're gonna do we're gonna loosen this screw but not undo it all the way and the reason for that is then we can use this to kind of, oh, I guess it didn't work. Never mind. I was going to use it to help keep this pulled up, but I guess that didn't work. Okay. I guess the way you can do this is hold this in place and then you probably have to put one screw like on here. So if you want, you can put like a screw here. And the reason you do this is because sometimes the bottom like right now I actually have access to the back plate from the bottom here right but uh, in some cases you might not have access to that so you can actually put the screw there I should have left them in first so I'm gonna put two of these screws here and then I can use that to help lift it up later so that way I can reach the screw mounts okay so now we're gonna take this out 
Okay, two of them should be good enough. All right, so now what we're going to do, I'm gonna open this packet. I don't wanna open this over the computer just in case I drop stuff in there. I don't wanna drop it on the computer. Okay, so I'm going outside of view of the camera. Sorry about that. Okay, so we got these pieces. All right, let me get this stuff all resituated here. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, um, I think this might be a little bit tricky, huh? Yeah, it's gonna be a little tricky because what we gotta do is, we gotta lift this up and while you're lifting this, so you can see it's kind of, the alignment is going to be weird. Since I can reach the back, I'm going to actually use, I'll probably end up using that as a way to do it. But let's see if I can do it this way. I'll show you guys, okay? So what you do is you get one of these thingies. Put that on there. Okay. And then we're going to put this on top. And we'll get this screw and get that through. Okay, and let's see if we can get that screw in place. Oh, good, we can. Okay, so now we got that and it's holding the whole bracket up. We can take this screw out. Okay, we'll take the second one here. Get this over there. And get this screw into place. Okay, and then we'll tighten this down. There we go. All right, now that we've got that, we'll take this screw back out because it's good enough, it's holding itself up. All right, take that out. Let me put the other bracket. Same thing, get these plastic mounting things in place. Very simple, very straightforward. Get the screw, you can drop it through, makes it a little easier. Get your screwdriver, hold it in place. Line it up, and there we go. Get the other one. Right, same thing, lift it into place, get it in, and then just tighten that down. All right. Very, very easy to do. One of the more simple um, CPU cooler installations. All right. Then, we got this piece, and depending how you want it, again, you can put it upside down if you want. Actually, maybe not, because will it be misaligned? It should be, it shouldn't matter which side, right? Should be centered no matter what. Actually, this way. Huh. Is it designed to be... I think, I think this piece isn't really, is it really centered? Oh, it is centered, okay. Never mind. So it shouldn't matter which way. They just curve the heat pipes over. Yeah, it should be centered either way. They curve the heat pipes over. So if you want, you can, again, you can put it upside down. But uh, most people will probably want the ID facing that way. And the reason why they do it this way is because there's um they put more space here so it won't cover the ram so if you're gonna do it right you put it this way so it doesn't cover the ram and then that way you can have an extra fan here and not be um it won't get in the way of installing ram over here as you can see okay all right so let's go ahead and get the thermal paste in and screw it down so we'll take this thing out we'll open this up and we'll squirt out about a pea-sized amount. All right, some of it was already coming out. Okay, you only need a pea-sized amount. You don't want to put more than that because if you put too much, it'll actually just all go outside of the motherboard on the, I mean, outside of the CPU. And yeah, you don't want that. So that should be more than enough. You don't want to put way too much. So yeah, make sure you're not like squeezing the whole tube out into here because they do include a lot, like more than you need. Okay, and then try and form it into a ball in the center. There we 
go. All right, and then very straightforward, we're just going to peel this thing off. Um, if you want, you can spread the stuff super thin and then put a dot in the middle, and that will also help spread it really good. But um, yeah, all right, anyways, we're gonna go ahead and just get this in here. Okay, I'm gonna use the screwdriver. I might need to use a better, longer screwdriver. This one, I my hand will be too cramped to reach. So I'm gonna tighten this a little bit and then go to the other side. Twist it backwards so I hear it click and tighten it a little bit. There we go. Okay, and then we just gotta tighten it down. So I'm gonna put this over here so you can kinda see both sides. Kind of, <laughs> not really. And then we're just gonna tighten it down, okay? So we'll tighten this side down first. Good, and then we'll tighten this side down. And there's not really much slack, so. Um, but the spring does most of the work, so you don't actually have to over tighten it. Just tighten it until it stops. Okay, until you can't twist it anymore. And you should be good. It's at an awkward angle. Okay, let me double check this side. Good, it's nice and tight. And this side. All right, nice and tight. Okay, now we're just going to put the fan in. Again, the fan we are putting on the other side because we want the air to blow um, blow over to this these other two fans that are over here. Actually, let me zoom out again. So yeah, we want it to blow to these fans that are over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this fan in. So it goes like this. And we just line this up, try and get the top of the fan to be flat, and then pull this into place. Good. All right, and then same thing with the other side. You just use your thumb to pull it, and it should go over and latch into place. There we go. Pretty simple. And then just plug the fan to the CPU fan cooler. Make sure you plug it into the right one because there are some that aren't for the CPU fan. Okay, let's see if I can show this. Okay, so here you can see chassis fan number two on there. And I'm assuming, yeah, that one's CPU fan down here. Okay, so we're gonna plug that there. If you want, you can try and hide the cabling. I'm gonna wrap it around the CPU or GPU power there. And plug this in. I think that's CPU power actually. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Should be good to go. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye.